How does the internal speaker cabinet pressure affect sound? This comes from Earl in Rochester, New York. It seems to make sense to have dead enclosures, as you discussed previously, indeed. But how is the pressure inside handled unless there is some porting? Wouldn't the pressure have a negative effect on driver performance? Thanks so much for all your contributions and keep the vegetarian recipes coming. Yeah! Well, I only got one. I got my world's best uh, chicken noodle soup. I'm going to try and do um, this Mornay sauce. I think maybe be the next one that we do. And I've got some really good recipes. Okay. Well, certainly speaker cabinet pressure inside our box has a great deal of effect on drivers. And a lot of people today, a lot of people, some people today are moving towards what we call open baffle speakers. And an open baffle speaker has no box, right? It's just a flat board and you've got some drivers poked in it and there is no box. So the driver can move freely and uh, I, you know, a growing number of people really like that sound. Now the issue, of course, has always been that if you have the back and the front of the speaker open to the room, then the positive pressure and the negative pressure are moving like in a push-pull manner at the same time and therefore you get cancellation. Because if the back of the speaker is doing the opposite of the front of the speaker, where those two waveforms meet, you're going to have cancellation of frequencies. And that's why uh, there's, oh, you have to EQ around it. There's any number of ways you can get around that, but you're, you know, it's not a perfect solution. Now, if you put a speaker in a box, then the back wave doesn't get out into the room. Therefore, the front wave is all that we hear. There is no cancellation. Bing, bada, boom. Adding a port or a hole into it relieves the pressure only at some frequencies, but not others. So I'm not a big fan of ports. Don't like the way they sound. There's a whole science behind them. Just never been much of a fan. I like sealed box speakers best. But just because you poke, poked a hole into the box doesn't mean that now all of a sudden there's, there's no pressure. You've relieved pressure at some frequencies, but at many others you haven't. So to the basic question, yes, obviously you have turned a symmetrical device, a driver, which is symmetrical in that as it moves out and it moves back, it has the same amount of tension on the driver. And so however much energy it takes to move it forward is the uh, same as it moves it backwards. Um, when you put it into a box, you slightly change that dynamic. And, and here's why. Um, in a completely sealed box, as, you, as the woofer moves in, you pressurize the box. But as the woofer moves out, you create a bit of a vacuum that sucks. So one acts like a spring, the other acts like a suction cup pulling back. And it kind of evens out if done properly. Now, I know there's a lot of debate about this, but uh, my, my good buddy Bob Carver and I talked about, <clears throat> at one point, I had this idea, why don't we create a vacuum inside of the, the box so that there's, there's no pressure inside? And, and it turns out that the, the vacuum is, you know, sucks it in. You have to have just as much energy to push it back out. So it doesn't really solve anything. And still, the air pressure outside is far less than the air pressure inside the box, which is changing. And as I said, as it moves forward, you're creating a bit of a vacuum, which holds the speaker back. And this one is a spring, which pushes it. But in any case, the important part is it is asymmetrical. And that's not exactly what we want. We want symmetry. And it's one of the reasons why in servos, um, we, we, well, in woofers, we prefer servos because a servo, which is an active device that measures the motion of the woofer and compares it to the instructions given to it by the amplifier, is so valuable. Any asymmetry relative to what the woofer is being told within a box is compensated for by the amplifier 
power. So if it needs more power to overcome this, it's there. And we, we have this, this wonderful feedback mechanism. Now another proposal that has, come, oh, and, and just to finish that thought, a mid-range driver and a tweeter, you, you're not gonna worry about it. It's really only woofers that are really pressurizing the box. Okay, and that's why a servo on a woofer is, is so valuable. When we get to mid-ranges and tweeters, we don't have this problem of the, the box being pressurized. In fact, most, most of those don't even have a back, they're not even open to the back of the box. So it's really woofers that we're talking about. Um, our guys here, and we're in kind of a hot debate as we're designing our new speakers, the, the AN series. Um, I was just going forward with adding a motional feedback system, which is an accelerometer, as I had just talked, because I know it works. I've used it in Genesis. It lowers distortion by a factor of about 10, which is fairly dramatic. Now, Darren and Bob, our, our engineering guys, are pushing hard for a DSP solution. And there's merit to that. The problem in any feedback system is that Feedback systems depend on the system itself making an error and then correcting that error. So sometimes that may be happening so quick you don't really notice it, but it, it always needs to error in order to correct. And, and depending on the speed of the system, you can get either a very smooth, and we try and keep it fairly high so that you don't really notice that. So I think it's more of an academic um, argument that's going on, but what they're proposing is if we can perfectly model, and we can, the woofer's motion, then using uh, DSP, uh, digital signal processing, we can do exactly the opposite. We can predict what that woofer is going to do and fix it before it ever has a chance to do it. Therefore, no error ever is made because we know what the woofer is going to do and we can make up for it. Therefore, we don't need an active motional feedback device. It's a good argument, and, and one that we're going to weigh together and see which one we could, because we're going to have DSP in the speaker systems anyway. Uh, we're going to do that to make up for the room. Uh, one of the things that, that, that open baffle, closed baffle systems all suffer from, of course, is room modes. So we're going to have a, a microphone and a DSP in our speakers so that the woofer is going to be compensated for how it interacts with the room. And that's going to be critical. And their argument is, well, if we've already got DSP, why don't we just have it do all this other stuff? Sometimes, um, well, we're just going to have to find out. I was going to give a lecture on Young Bucks, <laughs> but I won't. So, all right, there you go. Uh, I'll talk to you later.